Greetings, I'm Dr. Bobby Price, your plant-based pharmacist and nutritionist, also author of Education Over Medication. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about alkalinity and acidity in the body. Uh, it's become very popular to drink alkaline drinks, have alkaline juices and things of that nature. Now, quite often hear people saying, hey, this person's eating an acidic diet, this person's eating an alkaline diet. And so what I want to do is sort of take the conversation to the next level and uh, fill in a few gaps to help you understand alkalinity and acidity related to nutrition and also to related to health. And so when you think about it from the base point, what is pH? Because that's what sort of defines alkalinity and acidity. So pH has a scale from zero to 14. Zero is absolutely acidic. Right in the middle is neutral, so that's seven. And then at 14, you have alkalinity or very, very basic as we use in chemistry. And so quite often what you'll see is people will go out and buy alkaline water that has a pH of eight or nine or 10 or even higher. And what I want people to understand about much of that water is actually alkalized water, it's not alkaline water. And let me tell you what the difference between the two is. Alkalized water is basically sink water that they take um, lab-derived electrolytes and the electrolytes increase the pH of the, the municipal water. So the water you would naturally get out of your sink. This is basically the water that a lot of these companies are using. And what you can do is turn the bottle on its label and they always have to put the source. And quite often what you'll see is with a lot of these companies, you'll see source and it'll say municipal, it'll say um, made at the company, something like that, but it'll never say anything like this mountain. It won't say this late spring. It'll always say municipal source at this address this in a metropolitan city. And so that tells you that is taken pretty much out of the sink or faucet water. And what they do is they increase the pH by adding electrolytes, but these are man-made electrolytes. These aren't the electrolytes that you would see in natural spring water. So yes, it does increase the, increase the pH and it does make it an alkaline pH, but the water is alkalized because it's not a natural electrolyte that your body would recognize, okay? And so when I say electrolytes, I'm, think, I'm saying things like calcium, potassium, um, things of that nature. Those are the electrolytes I'm talking about that increase the pH of the water. Now, these are the same electrolytes that you will find in natural spring water, but the difference is, is these electrolytes are taken from nature. Uh, or natural source. And they do increase the, increase the pH, but quite often what you'll see is with natural spring water, and these the pHs of these waters are gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7.4, 7.6, 7.8 at the most. So they're not gonna be these extreme alkaline pHs that you'll see in alkalized water versus the alkaline water that you'll see in natural spring water. Uh, I think that's a really huge point. And so a lot of times when we think about things like, okay, you think about an acidic body, uh, one of the people who sort of popularized the whole idea of how your body becomes acidic and then that has health consequences is Otto Warburg. He won a Nobel Prize um, in the field of medicine. And uh, he talked about how when the body becomes acidic, that that is the space that cancer can grow in and manifest itself in. So when cancer is present in the body, it's present because the body is not alkaline, and it's very acidic, okay? And so when you start to think about how we can make the body very acidic is, of course, one of the number one ways we could do that is what we eat, uh, what we think, Anything you bring into the body can make the body acidic, okay? But what's important to understand is that our, our blood pH is supposed to be around about 7.4. And so when you look on the actual scale from zero to 14, and our blood pH is supposed to be about 7.4, that's just above neutral. 
you know, it's alkaline because it's above neutral, but it's not very far above neutral. So a lot of people think like we're supposed to have this quest, more is better, but our body actually plays this balancing act or symphony called homeostasis, where it's always trying to balance itself. It's not necessarily trying to get more and more alkalinity. It's trying to get an optimal pH in the body. And that optimal pH in the, in the blood is going to be 7.4, whereas the optimal pH in the stomach is going to be around about 2 or 3. You understand? So it's more about balance and less about more and more and more and more. Um, the other thing to consider is, and this is what I've learned in my personal experience is quite often when we have people in the hospital and we will have people who come in and maybe we do a swab test on their saliva, maybe we do a blood test and then a urine test. And what, what, what I've seen in my own personal practice is, is that in healthy individuals, the saliva is going to always be alkaline. In healthy individuals, the blood pH is going to always be around about 7.4. And in healthy individuals, the urine is going to be uh, slightly acidic. And that makes sense because when you think about it again, the kidneys and the lymphatic system is how we get rid of acid from the body. So it doesn't actually make sense that your urine is going to be alkaline. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, maybe you're you know, eating some very alkaline foods and only drinking water, and maybe you get a pH that is alkaline, but the job of the kidneys is to get rid of acidity from the body. And regardless of how you eat, um, the process of breaking down food and metabolizing food will eventually create acid in the body. It's just a natural part of our system and our system is designed to get rid of that acidity. And so quite often what I would see in my practice is people uh, who came in who had cancer, their saliva would be acidic when it should be alkaline. Their blood will be slightly acidic when it should be alkaline. And then their urine will actually be alkaline. And so you were probably weren't wondering, well, if their saliva is acidic and then their blood is acidic, how is it that their urine is actually alkaline. Well, as I said before, the job of the kidneys is to get rid of acidity from the body. So in cancer patients, uh, in patients that are diabetic or have metabolic acidosis, they can't get rid of acid out of the body. The body's become clogged up. The body has become stagnant. So because of that, the pH in the urine is going to be slightly alkaline because they're not processing out the acidity the way that they need to. And so again, I'm gonna go back to the blood pH because I think that's one of the most important, but again, the pH in the stomach is just as important because if you don't have an, a very, uh, if you don't have acid inside of the stomach, it won't break down food. If you don't have acid inside of the stomach, guess what? It won't actually cleave off the R protein on the vitamin B12 that you're consuming so that you can actually absorb it. So now you may end up having a vitamin B12 deficiency. If you don't have enough acid in your stomach, it will create acid reflux. As a result of not having enough acid, you can't break down the food. So the food sits in the stomach, it ferments, it rots, it creates gas, and then that, that is what creates the acid reflux condition. And so also what we also know is that when it, when it comes to the blood pH, this is how delicate of a window that we have when it comes to alkalinity and acidity in the body. And this is how beautiful the body is. Our blood pH is supposed to be around about 7.4. If it goes down to like 7.22, we go in a condition known as metabolic acidosis. And if it goes any lower, it could kill us. And so if it goes too high, we can go into a condition known as metabolic alkalosis. And guess what? That could kill us also. And so we're in this very narrow window where the body is balancing and having 
this beautiful symphony to maintain a pH that is perfect for all of the biological actions for our bodies to take place at a very efficient level. And so when you think about alkalinity, when you think about acidity, think about it as a balancing act. Don't think about it as good, bad. If you think about it in terms of good and bad, that's not how our body works. Our body is compartmentalized. There's areas where we're supposed to be acidic. There's areas where we're supposed to be alkaline. But the most important thing to understand when we talk about the blood, it's supposed to be slightly alkaline and it's supposed to stay in this small range. And we contribute to that with our diet. We contribute to that with our stress levels. We contribute to that with what we drink. Because if you drink a lot of coffee, coffee is extremely acidic and will cause you to have to uh, use alkaline reserves to balance that pH. And when I say alkaline reserves, uh, it's things that are alkaline in the body, like calcium. Calcium is probably one of the most alkaline uh, minerals that we have in our bodies. And it's what our body pulls when our pH gets too low. Let's say we're at 7.4 and it dips down to about 7.35 and it wants to get it back up. It will start to pull calcium. Now, the downside to that is going, it's going to start to pull calcium out of the bones and the teeth, which is why people get cavities and why people have real bones. You understand? So now it's pulling our alkaline. Once our alkaline reserves uh, deplete themselves, now it's pulling calcium out of the bone. Okay. And that's the first sign that's telling you that there's an imbalance inside of the body, okay? But it's always trying to keep this balance. And the best things that you can do to contribute to making sure you are maintaining this balance is to eat foods that are very alkaline, which are plant-based foods, to stay hydrated uh, with natural spring water, and to manage your stress and to exercise, but not too much, because if you exercise too much, it creates and builds up lactic acid in the body, okay? Which again, our body is designed to get rid of uh, through our kidneys and through our lungs. Uh, but uh, if you're not doing all the things mentioned before, then you're not able to process out this alkalinity and also sleep. Sleep helps with that as well. So I hope this helps to add to and contribute to the conversation of alkalinity and uh, acidity. And so let me kind of give you a few examples of foods that would actually contribute to acidity and foods that will contribute uh, to alkalinity. So uh, sugar, very acidic when it comes into the body. So when you're eating added sugar, not sugar from fruits, but sugar that is added to uh, food and taking out, taking out of something that will cause a lot of acidity to the body. Uh, coffee, um, sodas, uh, because they have phosphoric, uh, phosphoric acid inside of them. Um, things like meat, dairy, uh, dairy, uh, eggs, uh, genetically modified foods because they have pesticides and uh, herbicides on them. Um, a lot of the white grains, um, starches, um, those are things that are going to make you acidic, okay? And then the things that make you alkaline are going to be things like quilons, fruits, berries, uh, green leafy vegetables, ginger, melon, uh, ancient greens like um, quinoa and um, teff and kumut, uh, sea vegetables, pink Himalayan sea salt, um, which gets a bad salt, gets a bad rap, but not with pink Himalayan sea salt because it has 82 minerals inside of it. Um, those are things that actually contribute to uh, alkalinity inside of your diet. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please like below. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe for more great information and comment below. Let me know what you think uh, about all the content that I put in the video. So until the next time, peace and blessings.